Disclaimer. The views expressed on this episode of Perspective Platoon with Pratik are solely the opinions of the host and the guest. The content of the conversation is not reflective of the institutions or establishments mentioned therein. Take all these opinions with a pinch of salt and a dash of lime if needed. Namaskara, good morning, good afternoon or good evening whenever you're watching or listening and welcome to this episode of Perspective Platoon with Pratik. My guest this week is Cheng Hao. Cheng Hao and I met each other I believe sometime in the past three years or something through one of my friends Yvonne who's also featured on the podcast. Um, in this episode we spoke about a lot of topics like his interest in art, um, our initial sort of feelings of doom or the lack of during the onset of COVID, certain philosophies in terms of the way we approach life and uh, relationships. So Cheng Hao definitely adds a lot to the perspectives that I have sort of gained over time on this episode and there's definitely a lot that you can take away from it as well. Um, I'm really grateful for the time that he could spend with um, me sharing everything that he did and I'm grateful for you checking this out as well. That is, if you're listening to this part of the podcast. So without further ado, I present to you Cheng Hao on this episode of Perspective Platoon with Pratik. Apologies for the rumble. Or the ramble. Hey Chang'o, how's it going? Hey Pratik, I'm doing good. Good, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before we get started, if you could let everybody know who you are, what you do, what you like, what you don't like, aspirations, whatever, everything and everything you're comfortable sharing. Uh, all right. Hey, uh, my name is uh, Ching Hao Tan and uh, I'm currently living in Oklahoma uh, working um, and I graduated from Oklahoma State University with a mechanical engineering bachelor's degree. Um, I'm originally from Malaysia, but I came here to um, just, you know, gain more experience that I couldn't gain in, back in my country. So it's been great so far. It's awesome. It's awesome. Anything you sort of find interesting in everyday life? <laughs> uh, in everyday life? Ooh, that's kind of difficult to answer with the COVID situation going on. <laughs> true, but, true. Um, I would definitely say like, um, everything has been evolving like r- rapidly, um, especially like um, people are trying to adapt to this current situation. So that's right. like really interesting to see. Like everyone's like starting to work from home more and they're trying to like find what they really like to do just because um, a lot of people got, got laid off and that gave them like a short period of time to kind of think about what they really want to do. So Right, right, right. Speaking of which, like, I mean, let's talk about that. I don't think we've I've talked about that on a bar episode. Maybe I might have. I'm, maybe I'm just forgetting. But uh, what was your sort of feeling when it started unfolding? Like that early February or late February, early March of 2020, when everything was happening so quickly. What were your sort of feelings at that moment? Um, at that time, I was still studying and like I was really fortunate to be able to graduate at a period because um, I was taking like this senior design, which is like really heavy course and that determines if I'm able to graduate. But everything went smoothly and uh, I'm not going to lie, after graduation, it was kind of like difficult to find jobs just because um, nobody's looking for new hires, especially like for an undergrad. Um, everyone wants to hire either like doctors or um, like master's student. So it's definitely like a difficult time to uh, cope with, but everything worked out well. I found a job. So really, really fortunate and really like I, I feel blessed. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, because I like... <laughs> Maybe this is too deep of a question to ask. And if you're not comfortable answering, that's totally fine. But Mm -hmm. um, did you have that feeling of like, 
uh, oh no, I don't know what's going to happen to like us as humans. Like, is something going to happen? Because uh, the reason why I asked that is because I kind of had that feeling to where every morning I would wake up, go to the news and like check to see what the numbers are. Mm. And because uh, generally speaking, I don't know if I've said this openly out loud on an episode, but I'm quite a paranoid person. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, like I had that sort of feeling of impending doom um, mm-hmm. initially when it all started. But then luckily I was able to sort of the one good thing was that I put the news away <laughs> ah. and it sort of helped me like bring myself back down a little. Mm. Um so yeah, for you, did you have any of those sort of negative emotions or feelings that were initially sort of coming up when we didn't know what was in store? Um, definitely, like sometimes you would be like worried, um, especially with like so many death counts every single day. Um, you're definitely worried for yourself, your friends, and your family. But um, for me, I tried to like look at it in a scientific way, I guess. Like try to um just do more research and know more about the virus itself, um, like how to prevent you not getting it. And uh, another thing that my friend told me is um, try not to be too afraid of like the virus, especially with the vaccines and everything. Um, Just because of the virus, everyone's just, you know, not going out, not living their life to the fullest. So I try to, you know, um, just try to, I would say, do my best to not think about the negative things. I w- I would say, mm. <laughs> just right, because right, I want right, to, sure. yeah, I want to like um, cherish my time here in US while I can. Yeah, very true. I think it sort of initially when everything is happening, you sort of lose that um, sense of like for me, like you know, in terms of like you said. Uh, you try to stay away from those negative emotions. That was mm-hmm. that was something I understood a little after that. Mm-hmm. To you know, where I was like, okay, maybe I should just stop like looking at the news because I feel like, I mean, I have very strong opinions about the news, and mm-hmm. I think I've mentioned that before too on one of the initial episodes that I recorded. Mm-hmm. Um, to where there was a point where I just stopped following it. Like I didn't even keep up with anything just forget COVID but right I didn't keep up with anything that uh, was happening on the news now I do sort of look here and there right but not through the sort of main channels of news that are out there so Mm. um that definitely had like a negative impact and like you said keeping those negative things away definitely helped in terms of keeping a sort of more positive frame of mind in your head because um at the end of the day yeah like (laughs) I don't know if you're a believer of this philosophy, but I'm sort of the believer that um, if your time is up, your time is up. There's nothing right. you're going to do about it, you know? Yeah. So you have to do what you have to do. Right. And, but yeah, I guess there's also comes with that the fact that you can't be reckless about it either. So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, it's, it's just sort of interesting to see how everything was when it all started to how we are now. To where mm. I'm not saying that there still isn't cause for concern. I think there is to some extent, mm-hmm. but it's not as bad as it was initially. Right. Like be it with the vaccines and people being a little more conscious mm-hmm. and sort of doing their part. Mm-hmm. Um, it's getting a lot better. But mm-hmm. for you personally, did you did? Because I know, especially like in places like India and Malaysia, like the numbers were a lot worse than they were over here at a certain point in time. So did you mm-hmm. have that sort of worry of like family back home and how things would be for them or? Oh yeah, for sure. A little more level heavier about it. Um, like at the time, um, I think Malaysia just recently had like, um, a lot of people got vaccinated or just recently. So, um, during that period of time where, you know, U S has already been vaccinated, but, uh, Malaysia has not. I'm definitely like worried from uh worried about my family, just because I have um like a hundred and two years old, no, hundred and one years old grandma at home, and mm-hmm. having like knowing the COVID only targets people with like weak immunity system, that's definitely like worries me. Um, but you know my family is like really aware of the situation. They, you know, try not to go out, and you know 
keep themselves sanitized and stuff. So that's like uh, really comforting stuff to know. For sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, because um, yeah, you just never know, right? Especially initially, nobody knew where you could get it from. Because right. you know, you end up going to the grocery store to get something, right? And then, boom! Five days later, you test positive. So, right. Um, you know, I think at that point, um, it was like that. That fear of the unknown that everybody was like, "Oh no, what's gonna happen?" But now. Now that we're seeing things sort of, it's not gone back to the same. Mm-hmm. And, um, but still, I think everybody's sort of coming back to a frame of mind that like, okay, this is going to be okay. We can write it out and so on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but do you think that the world will be the same? Will it ever be the same? Or has it changed for ever? I would say it definitely has changed in some aspect, like um, like for work, in, for instance, um, a lot of people are realizing, uh, not a lot of people, but a lot of companies are realizing that people can actually work from home and still be as productive, if not more productive than before, because they're working in their comfort zone. So um, a lot of people are shifting towards working from home and also, um, you know, doing stuff more flexible way you know instead of the old traditional way which is really interesting to see because um you know everything's moving into digital age so you never know what will happen in the future you know um other than that i don't really see anything else change i definitely know um a lot of countries are trying to be more aware of this situation to prepare for the future so right Right, right. Yeah, for sure. Like like you said, right? Um, the one big thing I think that's come out of it is the ability to sort of be efficient with meetings. Because mm-hmm. before you would have to have everybody sort of come to a place and meet together and all that sort of stuff. But now, mm-hmm. da, 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 internet, and you know, there you are, you're looking at each other, discussing stuff and getting things done. So, um, you know, and everybody has their sort of preferences, I guess, but it's definitely made the world more accessible mm-hmm. in terms of in from, from that perspective like uh, does it have its flaws for sure i think it's something that still needs to be ironed out a lot more like if you were to look at it from the perspective of classes being done through zoom and all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. but generally speaking i think it's definitely sort of changed to where now not to say that this happened did not to say that this didn't happen before but mm-hmm people will now have that alternative like okay i don't need to fly from oklahoma to new york to meet somebody or like right. to meet for like a official meeting i can just right. you know pull up my laptop and there we go here we right. are so uh that's definitely something that's changed for the better uh in a lot of ways um well are you afraid of you know since we're all like human beings we all need um to be interacting with each other physically at some point but with all this going on, everyone's like working from home. Um, do you, are you afraid that you know humans may one day be somewhere? Not not to say like Japan is like that, but you know Japan is always like really to themselves all the time. <laughs> do, you, mm-hmm. do you feel like the world is gonna be like that ever uh, ever since like COVID comes in? I honestly don't know. I think at the end of the day. We'll- what if anything covid has taught us that things can be a little more efficient in terms of the way meetings can be done but at the same time it's also thought of that um we all need human connection right because you can only go for so long being alone in your room not doing anything um, right or not going outside after a certain point of time it does catch up so we definitely need that human connection to many aspects because um I mean, living with the same person uh, for like, or just looking at the same face for like six months without having gone out and sort of interacting with people, mm-hmm. it 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 does have its sort of pitfalls in a lot of ways because it takes an emotional toll on you, right? Because you're not right. um, getting to see your loved ones and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. So it definitely has a mental toll because of which... I don't think it will be as bad as it, people might have initially assumed. Or not, mm-hmm. but, well, I guess I don't know, like I said initially. But 
for me personally, I think because people are aware of the fact of are excuse me are aware of the fact that we all need human connection to an extent. Mm-hmm. I don't think that it's all going to change drastically to where they're going to lose that human touch. Is it going to mm-hmm. happen over time? Maybe because of the way technology advances. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the moment, at this point in time, I don't think it's going to. It's not something that we'll see in the next five years. Because, mm-hmm. uh, and I think like another thing that we as humans love a lot is convenience, right? So if like convenience is what drives us to that point. Mm-hmm. then I think that's where we sort of lose the plot as humans. <laughs> right. To sort of um, choose convenience over choosing your own mental sanity. Mm. You know, because <laughs> I guess this is a rabbit hole of its own and I'd love for you to share your thoughts on convenience and all that sort of stuff. But convenience, as much as it's a good thing, it's done a, a lot of good for the world. And I mean, we are all using things that make our life convenient. Mm-hmm. a lot of the times some of the things that are not everything but some of the things that are convenient can sort of seem gratifying initially mm-hmm. but then in the long run they're just sort of they come with depreciating returns you know they're not necessarily the best thing for you right um like kind of like how like fruits. kind of like yeah, how uh the people in wally you know everything is really convenient everything is like planned out for them you know they have like a system running smoothly but you know, everyone, they're not as healthy as before and they didn't even realize where they were at, until the end, so. Right, right, exactly. I think it's sort of that, I mean, and not to say that nobody has their flaws, everybody does, mm-hmm. but I think it's the, the flaw, the major flaw that we might have now is sort of losing sight of the fact that not all convenience is good. Mm. Um. Because, like, even with the way that, uh, and again, this is a kind of a separate topic, I guess, but sort of bringing it back to what we were talking about, um, it doesn't help if you're not actually putting in enough effort to get something. Because mm. I think as humans, and I mean, I'm no psychologist in any way, but this is just my personal opinion. As humans, we are wired to do the hard work to get something, at least evolutionarily speaking. Right. So now that we don't have to do as much of the hard work, Mm -hmm. it's definitely sort of having its own pitfalls in society. Mm -hmm. Again, not to say that it doesn't do good. For sure it does. Because I think the one major thing, have you heard of this person before I get into that point? Have you heard of this person called Naval Ravi Kant? No, not really. Okay, so he's sort of like this angel investor, come new world philosopher sort of guy. Okay. Um, And I remember him talking on a podcast with uh, Joe Rogan, who, where he was talking about how the world will become, will start to become a lot more creative when Mm -hmm. you lose, not lose, I guess that's the wrong way of putting it, but when things become a lot more easier for us as humans, we wouldn't mm-hmm. have to focus on much or on, we wouldn't have to focus as much on some everyday things, but we can focus our creativity to maybe sort of elevate ourselves as humans and sort of do what we love. At least mm-hmm. that was my understanding from what he said, which is also an interesting point. So what is your sort of thought on that? Like, Starting with the sort of negatives of convenience, in your opinion, what are what are some negatives of convenience? Um, I don't know. I guess there's definitely like positive and negative things to convenience. Um, negative wise, like you say, you know, people would get lazy and um, they wouldn't like figure out what the actual process is like. It's kind of like how, let's say, excuse me, you know, if bicycle, for instance, a simple example, if you know, they just put like a motor running it for you and you don't have to actually like cycle it. You won't know like what the actual, um, like psych- what the actual like purpose of bicycle is. So I guess like, like you say, convenience would kind of like, um, make you forget or not make you work hard for, uh, those re- uh, rewards. So, 
Right. But yeah. Right. Right. But I also think like and, convenience. Um, you know, it makes people think about ways to solve problems. Like, mm. you know, <clears throat> in the past, everyone has been like, um, riding the carousel or whatever. But slowly, they realize there's a better way of like, um, traveling. And they invented cars. They invented like planes, and that sort of like, um, the side of the convenience, uh, is what I really, um, I guess like, um respect like people would actually you know think of it and actually like make it happen so right 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 yeah and yeah like you said it's made human life a lot more easier to where now you don't have to sort of go and hunt for food or forage for food Mm -hmm. you know all of that has definitely sort of helped us to an extent to where we can focus on other things and sort of divert our energies to the things that matter to us more now. Right. Because the things that back in the day mattered more to the hunter gatherers was being able to eat because their mode for their mode was to survive. Mm-hmm. But now that with convenience we've been able to sort of negate that aspect of having to go and hunt for hunt for food or forage for food mm. and now just Focus your focus your energies on something else, be mm-hmm. it building something new, technology or right. creativity and art and etc. 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 It's right. given us that time to do that, which mm-hmm. back in the day we wouldn't have had because we'd be focused on getting food for ourselves and keeping ourselves alive. Right. Um so yeah, that's definitely like it's a and I think this is why I sort of find like evolutionary psychology interesting, I guess. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, again, that's a different rabbit hole of itself. <laughs> um, right. But yeah, it's sort of interesting to see how the world has changed. Even in the past, like, like from the switch of the millennium, right? Like from 19, like the 1999 to like the 2000s, like that switch, if you look at it over the past two decades, mm-hmm. has been very drastic. I mean, we haven't gotten to see much of the previous millennium because we were born mm-hmm. towards the end of it. Right. Um, but in the way things changed, like from your social media mm-hmm. and like that accessibility that you have towards people, it's all sort of gone into a different realm now to where it was before. And the internet right. for that matter, even though the internet, correct me if I'm wrong, did it start sometime uh, in like the late 90s? Yeah, I would say so. It started around the late 90s. Right. But then it actually had its boom period like towards the beginning of the 2000s, right? So, yeah. yeah That's when yeah, it's all definitely... bis- businesses uh, started realizing that, you know, it, they could actually make money from it um, just because, like, you know, you get to interact with people around the world with it. And you can, you know, they started seeing, like, oh, you can do business as well. So they started going into it. Right, like they sort of found that untapped potential, if you will, that the internet had to sort of right. do a lot of good things for the world, for sure. Right. Uh, speaking of which, do you have any sort of like um, things that you see today that mm-hmm. maybe other people don't think about or don't sort of think about as like, a, I'm using the word thing a lot, but don't sort <laughs> of look at that thing as something for the future. You know, like I think a lot of the times, we're sort of stuck in our ways to where we mm-hmm. like what we have, so we don't want to change it. Um, but do you see something in everyday life that you think has some untapped potential to make the world maybe or be the next internet, if you will? Um, I never really thought about that, but there's definitely like some things um, that could be a big, but I never really thought about it. Just because gotcha. I've been that I've, I've always been like just focusing on what I want to do and never really see the thing out of the box. <laughs> mm. So right, right, right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just sort of like, and I mean, like you said, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if for us, a lot of things we tend to have that tunnel vision about the things that matter to us. Right. So you don't necessarily tend to look at everything else that's happening outside. Uh, I mean, again, I'm nobody to say if it's right or wrong, but it's just mm-hmm. like, you know, the way of life. And right. if that keeps people happy, 
mm. then you know who am I to sort of question it. Right. Uh, is my sort of thought on it. But speaking of which, um one of the major reasons I also wanted to talk to you on the on the podcast was because uh-huh. of your art page that you have. Okay. And <laughs> you draw really nicely, man. That is some of the stuff is really cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And when when did you sort of have that bug for drawing and sort of creating art in that way? Um, I guess I was really into like drawing in my early um teenage years or like when I was like 10 to 12. Um I would always just um draw from what I see on internet. But I think that slowly fade away after, you know, having video games in our lives. It sort of mm. like took away a huge chunk of our time. So um since now that I don't really I still play video games once in a while, but since I don't really play it anymore, I have like more time for my hobbies and that's where I decided to just um you know try to get back into it. Maybe instead of just you know drawing what's on the what what's on the internet, try to um learn anatomy and learn like what's actually like behind their thought process of drawing everything which is really interesting so far but also difficult you know mm. especially like in this day of uh in this um era where you have social media everyone's like posting you know really beautiful art and you always feel like oh you're not up to their level which is not there's nothing wrong with it, it but it definitely like makes you feel less confident about your own piece of work so Right, right. What what sort of helped you sort of cross that barrier of not necessarily worrying about the art that other people pull out and sort of just, or put out, excuse me, mm. and just focus on the stuff that you want to put out? Well, I guess I try not to pressure myself just because I know that this is not like my job job, you know, it's just mm. my hobby. So I try to um, have fun with it. Um, there's this class that I recently took. Um, he's a... a cover artist for marvel and he every single episode he would like emphasize on just having fun instead of Mm. like worrying about the outcome because you know art is something that you should enjoy um if you feel like you know there's no fun in doing it just like if you feel like there's no fun in doing your podcast right now you wouldn't be like doing it for so long so i guess that's um one thing that drives me to draw uh as often as possible Right, for sure, for sure. Because I think it can sort of get lost in the world of being very conscious about results and sort of outcomes. Yeah, We can sort of lose the plot in terms of realizing that sometimes it's just about being in the process. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, what is what is being in the process for you like? Like when you pick something mm-hmm. that you want to sort of draw, how does how does that process start? Um, what do you mean by being in the process? Can you like elaborate just a bit more? For sure. Yeah. 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 Um, so for example, or not, well, I guess I'm just gonna break up the question a little more. Mm -hmm. When you see something, Mm -hmm. do you feel like a light bulb in your head where you're like, okay, I need to, I need to go and put this on paper. Mm. This is what I want to draw. Like, how do you sort of know what you want to do? Um, that makes sense. I guess for me, I would definitely like, um, so right now the course that I'm taking, uh, not course, but kind of like a workshop, um, mm-hmm. they're basically teaching you how to dis- deconstruct like human bodies. So um, initially when I wasn't like learning um, with people, I guess I just kind of like go into it and, you know, I have like all these uh, muscles to memorize and all these features on the human body to memorize as well. But um, one thing that helps is just kind of like this deconstruct everything um, and not worry about um, the details, the nitty gritty details and just do basic shapes and slowly add the details from there. Um, For instance, uh, an arm, you can actually just draw like a cylinder and then slowly add the curves of the biceps, the triceps, and all those whatnot into it. So that sort of helps, um, you know, drawing a better picture. Interesting. 
And you also mentioned something interesting earlier about um, some things that you didn't realize sort of went into it. Um, what are some things that we don't realize? Like for a, for a layman like me, who is not someone who's very artistic in the way that I like sort of draw or paint or whatever. Mm. What are some things that don't necessarily meet the eye initially, but then sort of catch up on you as you sort of visualize it and analyze it a lot more? Uh, from like the art perspective? Mm-hmm. Yeah, from the perspective of art, yes. Um, definitely like when you draw something, um, especially like for me, I see a lot of like semi-human kind of art style. Where it's not just mm-hmm. like anime or uh, you know two D form, there's like a lot of details going on which we didn't realize. Like you know material, there's like different ways of like reflecting, um, depending on if it's like metal, wood, or um, rubber. And like when you see something like a rifle, for example, a lot of artists actually try to deconstruct which individual part does. And actually understanding the um, construction of it in order to like draw like a really detailed version of it. Um, there's this artist, uh, Korean artist that I know, uh, Kim Jong Gi. Um, basically, he draws a lot um, of like I would say like um, 3D, but um, he uses like traditional uh, brush pen and he mm. draws a lot of like amazing art, which isn't like really detailed, but the way he draws it lets you realize, oh, it's a human. Oh, it's a rabbit. It's really interesting how like just knowing how things work would make the thing more real to the audience. Because mm. I think it's about that perspective, right? Like, yeah. The artist sees something. See, excuse me. The artist sees something that mm-hmm. the viewer doesn't necessarily see right. until and unless they sort of get a perspective for what the artist is thinking about. Because, mm-hmm. um, like, where where do I go with this? Uh, from the perspective of like, even when, say, you're watching, I don't know, a very controversial person again. I'm bringing mm-hmm. his name up again, but. Uh, Joe Rogan, for example, you mm-hmm. know, uh, it's not the same thing. It's not apples to apples, but more like apples to bananas. But in terms of like the um, comparison, if you want to look at it that way, a lot of the times when you see something mm-hmm. on the podcast, you sort of question why he's saying something or doing it this way or doing it that way. But then mm-hmm. when you sort of dig deep to know why he's choosing to do it that way, mm-hmm. it gives you a lot more. It gives you a bigger sense. Hmm. Maybe that wasn't the best example, but because as I mentioned earlier, it came up right. in my head. But yeah, even like even with say again, because I'm not very artistic in terms of art and drawing, I don't necessarily mm-hmm. know much. Right. But um, be it, you know, who knows what Da Vinci was thinking when he did the or drew the Mona Lisa? You know, right. like it's all those sort of interesting things that. If you were to dig deep into, mm-hmm. uh, it'd be very fascinating to know what how the wheels are sort of turning in the artist's head. Right. Um, is that something that you tend to think about in terms of, for example, let's say you drew something, mm-hmm. and after drawing it, you were like, "Oh, I didn't expect to do it this way, but this actually turned out a lot better than I initially thought." So right. have you had those moments at all? Um. Yeah, there are definitely like some moments like that, but um, I would say most of the times is after I finish the work, um, mm. and I see like what I lack in, um, because uh, right now I'm in this like small art community, and I would always like just kind of like share my thoughts and like ask how, ask them how to do it, and I would like maybe share them what I did, and they would just kind of like critique it. So I would always see like, oh, I could have done this like better in this way, or I could have like avoided doing this because it's not necessary. So, mm. 
Interesting. How important, since you brought it up, how important do you think it is to have that sort of community with you? Um, like in terms of them adding that perspective? Um, I would say it's really important to have someone who has like similar interests just because um, everyone needs like uh, people to share their interests with and actually like, you know, have someone who's actually excited to um, talk about it. Um, but at the same time, you want to make sure that the community is not big just because uh, people are not going to take you seriously. <laughs> There's like, I think two, three Discord channels that I'm currently in, but I think two of them is just like a really huge um, community because they're like really famous YouTubers. And mm. those tend to not help as much as like small communities like this one that I have only like 10 person in it because they tend to give more, um, I guess, constructive feedback. And the mm. rest is just saying like, mm. oh, nice job, nice job. Just because like, since there's so many people in it, they don't want to um, seem like the one who's negative and just like breaking down the things that you've done wrong. <laughs> so mm. everyone wants to be the nice guy when there's a lot of people around. <laughs> very true. That's a very interesting point you sort of bring out, which sort of took me to different places in terms of mm. how we are as people. Um, I guess to put it simply, like to sort of draw an analogy to that, when you're around your close circle, I think you're a lot more sort of, for the lack of a better word, you are yourself a lot more. Mm -hmm. You know, you are open to share whatever you feel about something when you're with the people around you who probably understand you better. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you were in like your classroom, for example, your sort of internal senses turn on to where you're like, oh, I need to like, make sure that I don't come out as dumb, <laughs> you right. know? Uh, and I guess you can sort of draw that parallel to the communities that you just mentioned mm -hmm. about it being a smaller community that versus a bigger community, which is very interesting because do you think that there's, well, maybe this is a different question in terms of the sort of goals that you intend to mm -hmm. have with the art that you put out, but... Say, for example, if, like, hypothetically speaking, mm -hmm. do you think a smaller community would reduce your reach versus a bigger community? Um, well, I guess it depends on what your goal is. If your goal exactly. is to, like, reach more people, then I would say definitely it takes time um, with the smaller community. But I feel like with so many constructive feedback coming in, your art is improving more and more, which kind of like shortened that period of time to make your art better. At the same time, um, being able to reach community with that art. Because if you're in a big community, even though your art is shared with so many people, not everyone's going to click in just because the quality is not at that point yet. But if you're able to get more constructive feedback and just draw better each time, your art is going to reach out to more people, not just the small community you're in. Very true. And it's that sort of perspective of like exponential growth, right? Like yeah. if you were to look at it from the perspective of growth, if you were around people who are giving you constant con constructive feedback, mm -hmm. um, you'd actually be changing things up a lot more frequently to where you would actually become a lot better than you would in a bigger circle where you wouldn't hear as much from people mm -hmm. about their sort of opinions about the thing that you're doing or whatever it may be, right? Because right. it's very like, again, it's 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 an interesting sort of dynamic in terms of the goals and the things that we want mm -hmm. out of what we're doing. Because mm -hmm. for example, generally speaking, everybody would think, oh, the more, the more eyes you have on it, the better it is. Right. That's not entirely true. <laughs> In yeah. every case, right? Because at the end of the day, people gravitate towards what, in their opinion, is the best thing that they're seeing. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily about the size or, um, you know, sort of, I guess, how much money went into it or whatever. Right. At the end of the day, it's, again, it goes back to this sort of perspective of what someone is looking at it with, I guess. Right. But a lot of that also plays into the 
dynamics of being in those different communities mm-hmm. um but sort of digging a little more into your sort of uh, arc of initially stopping and then sort of coming back to drawing mm-hmm. was there a sort of flip of a switch in your head to where you were like maybe i shouldn't be gaming as much and uh you know i should maybe start like go and like put myself out there through this aspect of creativity mm-hmm. uh, if i put it crudely i apologize but no, what was that sort of moment for you where you were like okay i need to excuse me i need to sort of switch things up and do this instead of doing that um for me it's definitely when i graduated and like looking for jobs um mm. you know when you have um so limited time especially like after graduation you barely have time for yourself you would realize right. you really want to do the stuff that's meaningful and you know gaming with friends is fun and all but um you would also want some time to do something productive to keep your life um balanced and yeah i try to um minimize my gaming time and you know try to do stuff that actually um you know you'll look back and say oh i i did this and i'm proud of it so yeah mm-hmm. sort of bouncing off of that mm-hmm. what is well not what is but uh it's sort of that dichotomy i think that i personally have understood a lot to over this period of the year and a half that we've had where i've come to a realization that time with the self time with yourself excuse me is very much important as much as it is, as it is important to be around people mm-hmm. it is it's a concoction that sort of makes this machine work if you will mm-hmm. um in my opinion um so how important Oh, what well, well, before we get there i guess what is your what is your sort of perspective on spending time with yourself um through drawing being creative versus spending time around people um i guess um spending time around people it's you know it's fun um you get to you know have fun chit chat and stuff but it's not the same cuz you know you're not doing things that you want not not you not necessarily say you want but i want to be around my friends but at the same time i want to do something for myself you right know, um right. like you do your podcast you want to um create something and you know when you're older you can like look back and see oh yeah i did all this and i'm actually like proud of it but when you you know be with friends there's definitely like good times but at the same time you can you recall like every single moment that you've like did those things with them but for art or like you know podcast you can look back at that piece and say oh yeah like i you know i was really bad back then <laughs> and then you slowly like see your progress as you like uh make more and more and that's like really satisfying right 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 cuz and i think that's something that sometimes we are i guess afraid is not the right word but we don't tend to maybe talk about as much or at least i personally feel that way mm-hmm. because you also want people around you so mm-hmm. you sort of tend to like sort of give in to those um again temptations is not the right word i'm not finding the right words i guess but um <laughs> It's sort of like how do I put this? It's sort of like you again for the lack of a better example I guess sometimes you would hang out with a group of friends even though you don't necessarily want to just because of the sake that just because you feel like you should keep that thing going so that you have it um and you sort of let go of this time that you actually need for yourself if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Right. Yeah. So does is like art and drawing for you meditative in a way? Um I would definitely say yes in certain situation, but it also depends on like where I'm drawing and like mm. um 
what how I'm feeling that day. You know, if I'm feeling tired from work, um, if I'm like feeling, you know, not in the right mood, it's definitely like sort of frustration just because I couldn't get what I wanted. Um, you know, when you draw or when you make something, I'm sure you've hit some point where I really want this to be this way, but I just couldn't get it. And sometimes right. it gets frustrated. So I would definitely say like it depends on the time and place itself. Mm. Mm. And how do you sort of pull yourself back when you have those moments of frustration and like, you know, those moods that you have sort of affecting your mm. output, if you will, for the lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. How do you sort of pull yourself back and realize, okay, I mean, this is not the worst thing that could be happening. Mm-hmm. How can I sort of bounce back from it? How do you sort of look at that? Um, For me, I would definitely like, you know, take a break once in a while. Or mm-hmm. um, one thing that I realized that some people do is just stop working on the the actual work that you want to do and just, you know, doodle, um, try to make things fun again, you know, draw, sim- uh, just simply drawing whatever on a piece of paper and, you know, just having fun makes you realize that, um, you know, oh yeah, I should be having fun. So, yeah. Mm. I guess we sort of hit on this earlier, but I want to sort of expand it on, expand on it a little more if you don't mind, Mm -hmm. sort of in this realization of having fun, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I guess there's also, there's a ton of nuance associated to what fun is and what kind of fun is right for you Mm -hmm. uh, versus what is wrong for you and so on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't be the judge for what's fun for you at Mm -hmm. the same time, like, Somebody living next door to me can't be the can't be the judge for what's fun for me. Right. But at the same time, I think a lot of the times we sort of tend to give up on those things of that tend to well, we tend to we tend to give up on things that make our day mm-hmm. to sort of focus on just the main thing that maybe is bringing us money or bringing you something. Right. Material, if you will. Maybe it's right. a sort of material, spiritual conversation. Mm-hmm. But what is your sort of take on that from a more materialistic world and spiritual world and sort of fun from that perspective? Well, um, I would definitely say um, I definitely had that point of time where I just think money is everything. Um, mm-hmm. Just because, you know, you need money for survival. You need to pay rent. You need to pay for food. But at the same time, I realized um, it's not worth it just because, um, like, for example, for my paycheck, I'm paid, like, hourly. If I pay, if I work this one hour for that tiny bit of paycheck, instead of, like, doing what I really love, it's just not worth the exchange. I would say it's the the value is different. Um, but for example, if you're you know getting like millions of dollars from from your job, then every second counts. Um, you want to make sure to do as much as possible for your company because um, you know you're you have that responsibility. Uh, responsibility. Um, yeah. But right now, since I'm just working like a fresh graduate job, it's like an entry level. So I'm not, I don't really have that much amount of pressure to work more than what I need to. Hmm. Definitely, because I think it's a sort of, it's also a question of responsibility versus what's cost effective. Um because at the end of the day, we live in this world where money is needed. You you right. can't survive without it. So there's no hiding from the fact that we all need money to survive. And, right. you know, we find our way to sort of make that money for sustenance, even if it's not for splendor. But um, to sort of go back on that interesting point that you made about um, now necessarily not being the time where there's a ton of pressure on you, mm-hmm. do you think... And again, feel free to share whatever you're comfortable sharing. Mm. But do you think that 
is college students who or recent graduates or college students do you think this is the ideal time for us to sort of just get out there and try our how try our hobbies instead of just feeling bogged down by the real world for the lack of a better word well i would definitely say there's a balance that you have to meet um like for sure i'm pretty sure you've heard of like gary v he always mm-hmm. say like uh your 20s is the most important period of the uh your of your life and i agree but at the same time you need to know what is the line that you shouldn't cross if you know you just graduated and you don't have any money you're i'm not going to tell you to just try your heart out on taking risks doing whatever you want i'm definitely going to tell you to hey maybe you should work a bit and you know have some emergency fund behind you just so you can do whatever you want in the future but um yeah there's definitely like a line that you need to meet and just you know not live what they call the american dream and just do whatever you want that's definitely like a responsibility that ever has to bear mm again that's a very interesting point you sort of make cuz i think it's sort of that colorful imagination right that's out there in the world where they're like oh you know forget work just focus on this and sort of go out there and right um you know just hone in on your art hone in on this hone in on that yes of course but right. at the same time <clears throat> what is the point of taking risks if it leaves you nowhere right i guess is the question right because yeah if you say for example like in the situation that you're in for example like you're working but at the same time you're sort of focusing on your art and you're sort of giving that it's due time whenever you can it's a calculated risk right it's not necessarily a all guns blazing sort of risk right so what is your sort of take on calculated risks and how uh we as people could maybe bring it into our lives cuz i do feel like a lot of the times college students are also sort of bogged down by the sort of pressure of going into the real world and starting a job and all that sort of stuff to where mm-hmm. they let go of um like you know they let go of some ideas that they have of maybe mm-hmm. starting a podcast or being like you know doing some art or whatever mm-hmm. so from that perspective how important do you, how important do you think it is for us to sort of maybe try and take those calculated risks if we right. can Um I guess for me um there's this book that I've read um it's about how successful people are actually successful before because of like the timing and also the location they're at so I would say like definitely like take a risk of doing whatever you want but also realizing what you have to do if you fail mm-hmm. um like for example if you have a kid next time who wants to be like a youtuber cuz all kids want to do that right now you have to like tell right. them oh if you can't do it if you don't make it um like do you have any backup plans like make them realize the i guess the <clears throat> real realistic world like how everything runs mm-hmm. like make them think about the consequences and also have make them like think about the backup plans So um I de- I definitely think like you know people like Elon Musk or like Bill Gates they always like you know think of um in their books I remember Elon Musk said something about funding SpaceX with his own money and that's definitely like um a great example of risk taking um I guess you know since he has like nothing to um take re- responsibility off he just goes all in and think everything's going to be okay he believes in his own be- ability but at the same time you know things could go wrong and there's not going to be any spacex until today so yeah, it's a really interesting topic to talk about and i really think the timing and the people you meet the location you're at is really important that very very true very true cuz even for Elon Musk to sort of since we we brought him up he mm. had a paypal to sort of fall back on like right it wasn't the end of the world for him 
And right. to sort of add to the point, uh, before I sort of add that, what is the name of the book that you read where you sort of mentioned that perspective of telling kids or whatever, telling them that have a backup plan? What was the name of that book? Do you remember? Uh, I don't really remember. Um, it's a book about how, it's not really about backup plans, but a book about how all successful people yeah. are actually like born in a specific era that, you know, Bill Gates bo- is born in you know Silicon Valley where technologies are booming at the time and Excuse me. Mm-hmm. he made internet possible uh, not made internet possible he made like a uh, operating software so yeah right 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 um, I was just curious because that all of that like that concoction of being in the right place at the right time and sort mm-hmm. of having backup plans and all that sort of stuff it's Mm. an interesting conversation to also have because i don't think it's something we think about as much or not to say that we should like sort of think about it every single day Mm -hmm. because i like maybe from a more spiritualistic sense i'm i'm a very i'm a believer of us being at a certain place at a certain point in time because our life Mm -hmm. is meant to be there or meant to be there to, Mm -hmm. to put it simply uh, but to sort of go back on that conversation of like backup plans and such, what I also wanted to add was, I think it's important to realize that it's not the end of the world if something doesn't work out, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, say, for example, again, going back to Elon Musk, not the best example, I guess, because mm-hmm. SpaceX worked out. But <laughs> if SpaceX didn't work out, mm-hmm. I'm sure he's the kind of person, I, I don't know much about him. Like, I haven't mm-hmm. necessarily done a deep dive into his, like, uh, mentality if you will but mm-hmm. I'm sure Elon Musk from the kind of like guy that he seems to be he probably would have bounced back to uh, to realize that SpaceX not working wouldn't be the end of the world mm-hmm. and I mean I guess you can take it from his own example right because I think SpaceX like fa- like they had a few missions that failed mm-hmm. till like they reached that point when something actually became successful Right. so it's not like he gave up on the first time and I think mm-hmm. that's another thing that we don't realize a lot is that it's okay if it doesn't work out the first time. Right. If you feel like it's not for you, sure, you can move on. Mm-hmm. Or if you feel like there's more to give and that you can put in more effort, mm-hmm. so be it. Do put in that more effort. Like, don't... Because uh, even, like, for example, like, how I look at certain things, like, even, for example, maybe a post that I put out on Twitter or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, I have certain expectations for them, Mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily met. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. You know, you could still keep trying and still keep doing whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it'll take some time. Uh, Have you ever had that sort of thought with, be it art or be it the job that you're doing right now, Mm -hmm. um, to sort of realizing that it's okay and that things will work out eventually have you had that thought yeah for sure um like a lot of things a lot of the things that's like happening right now is not like planned at all um yvonne didn't plan to take her graduate uh degree and i didn't plan on working the job that i wanted to do right now but you know things eventually work out um like you say some things are meant to happen and you are meant to be at a specific place and at a specific time. Um, and I also believe that because I, I recently um, talked to my friends about it uh, and they they mentioned that, yeah, they do believe it, but at the same time, they don't want to like talk about it because um, it just seems uh, sad, I guess, for them. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, because like um, one of my friends who was supposed to be like a pilot, but because of COVID, they had to like stop the, um, flying academy or uh, the pilot school and uh, he just say like oh maybe it's like he, he believed that some things is meant to be and it's just sad sometimes depending on the situation but yeah I do mm-hmm. believe um, you know if things don't work out it eventually will be a thing again uh, just you know trust your own process trust what you do and you know, just continue to be more positive about it. Eventually, hopefully, maybe you'll get there sometime. Right, right, 
right? And before I sort of say my next point, I just wanted to say uh, to everybody who's listening and watching, Yvonne featured in one of our previous episodes, and I'm going to link that episode in the description if you want to check that out after listening to uh, this episode with Cheng Hao. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, they're partners. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, to sort of hone in on that point, if it's seeming sad and seeming unfortunate, I think it's also sort of mentally striking a balance to air. And again, I've nobody, nobody, I again, this is just a personal perspective, mm-hmm. but nobody ever has it always figured out. <laughs> It's always sort of a trial and error where you sort of gradually figure it out as you go and you know right. you sort of get to that point after you've sort of fallen down so many times. Mm-hmm. So just again, like it's just a personal take that I have in the sense that even though some things might mean might uh, let me frame that right. Mm. Even though you might think that some things are meant to be or not meant to be. Mm-hmm. You can't stop yourself from trying just because you think that it's not going to work out, right? Because mm-hmm. then you're not giving yourself the opportunity to try and make it work out. Right. You know, because like, for yeah. example, let's say I'll take myself as an example in terms of like the podcast, right? Like mm-hmm. if I was worried about the fact that there's millions of podcasts out there and nothing is going to happen with this mm-hmm. and that I'm doomed to fail. Mm-hmm then and I, then i don't start mm-hmm. then i am failing myself right by not giving myself the opportunity to try you know right. i think that's the thing that also we sort of need to think about and again i'm no no holier than thou i i, I <laughs> sometimes i feel like it's very it's very it can seem kind of condescending also to some people when you sort of talk about the stuff but i like the reason why i'm sort of bringing it up is because i think it's important for us to realize that sure things matter and like i said i'm a believer of us being or us being meant to be in a certain place at a certain part of our lives that doesn't mean that you don't try if it right. doesn't work out sure like move on or keep at it whichever one you choose to do right. but at least give yourself that opportunity to where you can <laughs> get something from it you know like mm-hmm. what is your sort of take on that do you think that a lot of the times we're just digging a hole for ourselves by sort of assuming that nothing is going to work out without even trying uh yeah definitely i agree with you in the sense that you know even though um our whatever we're working on doesn't matter to people right now but i feel like we should do whatever it, you know it takes to like again make us happy at the end of the day, um, you know, other people's um, opinion don't really matter as long as you're happy. Not, not in a negative way, you know, it's for our own right. podcast or like art. Um, but I feel like we should definitely like always keep the mindset of like doing our best in everything just so we don't regret at the end of the day. So, yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think I think you can definitely take a lot more solace from the fact that you tried and sort of Mm -hmm. regretting it 20 years Mm -hmm. down the road being like oh i wish i would have started you know the podcast and spoken Mm -hmm. to so on and so forth or oh Mm -hmm. i wish i would have done you know art and sort of gotten into it a little more and sort of learned the anatomy and the processes associated with it Mm -hmm. maybe i'd be in a better place i think yeah being regretful is (laughs) probably too late exactly Exactly. Yeah. It's too late to where you can do almost nothing about it. Sure, you can pick up a habit later, mm-hmm. of course. But then if that sort of emotion of regret is just sort of looming over you like a crowd, then uh, excuse me, like a cloud, then you're sort of again pulling yourself down, right? Right. Um, but yeah, that's that's just a different sort of tangent that we've gone into. Uh, but... Again, this is maybe a very philosophical question or a psychological question, I guess, but it's just sort of to get your perspective on it. Do you think that a lot of the times we are pulling ourselves down? Um, what, I, what I mean by that is with what we were just talking about, right? Like about taking that step, about doing something. 
mm-hmm. or you know making that division between oh okay I, this is the time i'll spend with people and versus this is the time i will spend on my art mm-hmm. sometimes it's very easy to sort of get into this idea that oh because of x y and z i'm being pulled down mm-hmm. but then at the end of the day you're the one making the choice so exactly do you feel like we pull ourselves down from that perspective Yeah, definitely. Um you know, like you say, um at the end it's still your choice no matter like what you want to do. And at the same time, those choices will lead you to um the result whichever it may be. You know, if you choose to hang out with your friends, you get a, you know, <clears throat> you have a good memory, you have some good time with them. But if you choose to do art, you know you may be alone and you may create something good at the end of the day but um i guess yeah we all pull ourselves down um all the time but i guess it's just depending on how you look at things if you say oh if i didn't like hang out with them i could have draw this but if you look at it in a positive perspective you made some good memories with your friends at that point of time. So, it definitely like um it's definitely like how you see things in a lot of uh, in a lot of the time. So, for sure take on it. And you sort of mentioned that earlier too about like in the scenario of us talking about covid, mm-hmm. about having that positive perspective because mm-hmm. yeah, I am with you in that you need to look at the positive side, look at the silver lining mm-hmm. like of things not working out say for example uh i don't know i was planning to go uh somewhere but mm-hmm. it didn't work out maybe there's reasons for it you know like right. um in the metaphysical world mm-hmm. maybe there's reasons for it that it didn't work out and that's okay maybe there is something better for you or maybe you can go to that place at a time when you probably wouldn't have much as much excuse me disturbances as you probably would have had if mm-hmm. you were to go at the time that you really want to go at right so yeah it's it's just sort of all those sort of interesting things about viewing things from a, from a positive perspective and sort of looking at it with the silver lining right mm-hmm. so what helped you sort of develop that perspective because i think it's something that can be developed it's not it's not mm-hmm. like you sort of born with it or you're stuck with it mm-hmm. you can always sort of flip it if you are open to flipping it right so what what helped you sort of keep that open frame of mind and sort of be positive and see the silver lining in things well i'm um i would admit that i'm not always positive but um one thing that my uh that i learned from is definitely from my dad um my dad always like tend to say like oh you know bad things always happen you know just take it as a lesson um because i w- <laughs> i would always do like really dumb things and also like bad things would happen but my dad would always like um say you know just take it as a lesson you know now you know what not to do and um it's always important to just always learn from the bad things instead of like seeing it as oh why did this happen to me you know um just feeling down is not going to you know make things happen you have to always take action and i guess life goes on no matter like if you see it as a negative or a positive thing very true very true life goes on uh yep. you sort of have you sort of have control over what kind of glasses you wear to see the life that's happening in front of you Right. Um, but no, that's awesome dude like in terms of getting learning that from your father because I think like you said, you're not always positive. You have those moments of like negativity that sort of float over, but mhm. You have that realization from what I can tell mhm of admitting the fact that that's going to happen because a lot of the times it's very again i think we have very like that tunnel vision that horse vision about like okay if i'm going to keep a positive perspective i expect it to always be positive 
but that's just not how life is right like life has its own way of sometimes having its own ups and downs so um sometimes you can be positive sometimes you will have those moments where you're just having negative thoughts but then you know how to dial it down is that safe mm. to say yeah yeah cuz like for example you, we get a ton of lo- like a ton of irrational thoughts sometimes about our insecurities or anything else so for example like i have mentioned this before in one of the episodes but um one of my major insecurities is losing my parents um and part of me knows like i know that eventually their time will come um you know but it's it's sort of like sort of preparing yourself not preparing yourself i guess but like um because i've had that insecurity um sometimes i get very irrational thoughts mm-hmm. about like say for example if they're saying oh i'm going here or i'm going there sometimes my brain takes me to different places <laughs> but then you know somehow i find myself back where i'm like okay it's stop going there mm-hmm. you know like control cuz we have the ability to control where our thoughts are going mm-hmm. maybe we don't have control over the stimulus <laughs> but we do have control over the response right so right how do you sort of navigate those negative irrational thoughts that come to you and sort of bring yourself back well i don't really have like a specific way but i would say mm-hmm. definitely like um have some time for yourself and for me i would always um taking a nap is like a heart reset for me just because mm. um you know you don't think about things and when you wake up you know maybe you still have that thought but um it definitely like gives you some at least gives your brain some time away from what's happening which sometimes help for me but you know everyone's different maybe you know if they took a nap they may still think about those negative thoughts in their head but everyone's different but my way of like um coping with negative things is just i guess not think about thing not thinking about it right 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 for sure cuz it's sort of like shutting that door on the thought that comes up right mm-hmm. um and it's not yeah, always definitely. the healthiest way of like doing it just because sure. like um i know like a lot of people ta- say like oh you should definitely like talk it out you should definitely like you know uh let other people know what you're feeling but um like i say that's what worked for me i'm not expecting everyone to do it so right 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 exactly cuz i think mm-hmm. again going back to what we were talking about earlier a lot of it is just trial and error right like mm-hmm. you find what works for you you do it but you can't expect to copy elon musk's template and expect your life to go like elon musk right right if that was the case and everybody would the Elon Musk or whoever right. follows him you know so uh but that's just not how the cookie crumbles so mm-hmm. if for you that's what that that's what works then mm-hmm. you know like i think again like you said it's not the most healthiest way of doing it mm-hmm. but it works for you now and maybe gradually through that you will figure out a even healthier way of doing it right you know? who's to right. say uh that that won't happen so same thing for me too like i used to be very um internal about a lot of things i wouldn't sort of put it out and by putting it out you don't necessarily have to um tweet it out or put it on instagram or whatever you can just simply go to a journal and write it out you know um mm-hmm. it's it's things like that i think that's fine that's kind of like a way of creating that mental i guess you can never have mental equilibrium but <laughs> creating <laughs> like a bit of a mental equilibrium to where you can sort right. of have some control over everything that's sort of cooking up in your head uh, right but again uh sort of transitioning into something else a little um i didn't get to ask you about this as much but i just wanted mm-hmm. to talk about it over here and if you're not comfortable sharing it that's totally mm-hmm. fine i'll okay. just edit this part out mm-hmm. but uh what i was going to ask was you guys have been together for a while like since your high school since how long since high school yes yeah about 7 years So. seven years right mm-hmm. um and yeah this is like a hard turn from that and oh, i apologize good. if it was very jarring but mm-hmm. 
in this world of sort of like open doors and come and go and all of that sort of stuff in terms of relationship statuses mhm how have you guys <laughs> worked it out to this happy medium um i guess we um there's no real good way of like putting this i guess um just work things out and you know I mean there are some people who I understand you know relationship may be toxic or maybe your partner is not who you really want to be just because of their um daily lives um how they do things but I guess for us we just kind of like compensate with each other's um uh I guess daily lives routine you know she may not like to do this I may not like to do that but at the end of the day um you know we still like love each other uh and at least for me i feel like it's going to be really different if i find another individual just because we've been together for like 7 years mm-hmm. and um my other part uh, if i like have another partner it's not going to be the same and it's going to feel wrong at least for me which mm-hmm. um you know I'm not looking forward to that. So, <laughs> right, right, right. Cuz like here's the thing and again maybe this is coming from a person who's never been in a relationship and who's never necessarily had that or explored that avenue of life. Something is working, right? Cuz like a lot of the times again, this is an outsider's perspective mm-hmm. before anybody else who's listening to this is like, "Oh, you've never been in a relationship. <laughs> you don't know Jack." So I'm going to have mm. to bleep that out but anyway mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't know anything <laughs> what are you talking about all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. again this is just an outsider's perspective right but then mm-hmm. there is something that is working because if it wasn't working for either of y'all y'all wouldn't mm-hmm. be together right mm-hmm. right yeah so it's just sort of interesting the sort of how we look at relationships in the real world and what is your perspective on that like okay before i say that let me sort of like bring it back a little bit Mm-hmm. um being from asia mm-hmm. i'm sure there's a lot of similar even though we're from different parts of the world different mm-hmm. parts of asia mm-hmm. i'm sure there's a lot of similarities in the way that we look at relationships right and life and so on mm-hmm. with the perspective of relationships i think i don't know if compromise is the right word but Asian cultures have this ability to sort of make things I'm and I'm not saying everybody is that way unfortunately things don't work out for some people and they move on mm-hmm. but we have this knack of making things work mm-hmm. that again outside this perspective I don't mm-hmm. think people in the western world have right what is your sort of take on that um Well, I guess it's kind of like what you say, you know, since um the western world is like really different at least from my perspective. Um I don't want to say like their way of doing things is wrong. I just think it's like yeah, different and unique in a way. So, um I feel like they jump on the wagon too fast. In mm. a way that they never really try to know each other. more before getting married because um i feel like marriage for me at least i don't know about you but it's definitely like a really big thing where you know you're going to spend the rest of your life together and you want to make sure that you found the right person but you know sometimes you know things doesn't work out at the end <clears throat> that's why divorce happen but i feel like for western side of the world they always tend to you know not knowing their partner well enough and just get married that's why i don't want to say this is the reason why their divorce rate is higher but it's definitely like one of the factors or reasons for sure for sure that's definitely a contributing factor in a lot of ways and i remember hearing someone talk about this mm. i can't It's this person called Ranveer Alabadia who I follow. He's an Indian content creator. Mm-hmm. Um and I might have heard this on a podcast I can't remember which episode. If I do I'll link it below. 
mm-hmm. if not i'll just link his page below that you that we like people who are listening can or watching can check out his podcast but mm-hmm. uh, i remember him sort of talking about how we are very quick to jump and take a move in the honeymoon phase right mm-hmm. like like you said that phase where everything is lovey dovey everything is cute everything is like roses and all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. you sort of take the plunge at that moment right um, <clears throat> but mm-hmm. you haven't necessarily gotten to a point where you've went past that honeymoon phase and mm-hmm. just been together for long enough mm-hmm. like you said right cuz sometimes we as people we tend to put up a facade to make things work for us mm-hmm. but then there will be a point of time when knowingly or unknowingly consciously or subconsciously that facade will fall mm-hmm. and you know when that facade falls then all hell breaks loose yeah <laughs> uh, at least that's my sort of take on it in the sense mm-hmm. of that maybe and this could be generalistic it doesn't have to necessarily just be about western culture cuz i do feel like definitely dating culture has changed in india Mm-hmm. again i've never i've never dated myself but mm-hmm. from what i've seen dating culture mm-hmm. has definitely changed and people are a lot more open to it than they were before right like people of our generation not necessarily people of the elder generation mm-hmm. but the people of our generation are a little more open to it now mm-hmm. um so parts of that also sort of tend to creep in to eastern society um but it's just sort of fascinating to see that I don't want to say that we have all the answers but mm-hmm. there is something that is working here that is not working there. Mm-hmm. Um and like you said it's not about what is right or what is wrong it's about mm-hmm. what is working out for you. Right? So right. at the end of the day if it's working for you it's working for you. Mm-hmm. Um cuz have you like again this is just me not knowing enough I guess but what is your if you want to guide somebody on like sure if you want to guide me on like you know having a relationship with somebody mm-hmm. what is something that you would tell someone like me like a short advice sure yeah yeah like advice or whatever doesn't have to be short whatever you're willing um, to share i guess definitely um try to accept you know um your partner's good and bad you know mm. try not to um just because of you know some tiny little thing like let's say if your partner doesn't do this or do that don't try to just like say oh because you don't do this I'm I don't find you attractive anymore which doesn't work like that mm. try to like i guess um you know love both side of it and just like mm. like you say compromise with each, each other right 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 cuz again this is again maybe the uncultured in terms of dating part of me that's sort of coming up but mm. to sort of draw an analogy to what you just said about liking the good and the bad mm-hmm. again not it's not apples to apples but say podcasting Mm-hmm. I like having these conversations being able to sort of open my own mind up to different perspectives that I've never looked at. Mm-hmm. But then sometimes there's the sort of oh I need to oh I need to sit down and sort of watch everything and mm. make sure that I'm getting everything right in terms of editing. Mm. You know, it's it's not the thing that I love to do, mm-hmm. but in terms of like editing it, I love this part of it. I love talking to people about it or just mm-hmm. like you know learning new things but in terms right. of editing it uh mm-hmm. sometimes i can fall behind a little mm-hmm. uh if i have to be brutally honest with mm-hmm. myself and with everybody and with you um but yeah it's like what i've realized is that i also need to fall in love with this process because mm. if i want this i'll have to do this as well right uh and i guess again no it's not apples to apples but mm-hmm. um if you want the good side of them mm-hmm. and you feel like there's definitely something that works for the both of you mm-hmm. you also have to sort of know that they have their flaws right 
and that nobody's perfect. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Have you sort of gotten any relationship advice in your time that you've been with Yvonne or, well, one that, maybe mm-hmm. to add a sub question to that, what mm-hmm. is something that you learned throughout your relationship with Yvonne that you didn't realize actually mattered, but it actually does matter? Um, I guess like paying attention to like tiny things, which I'm still not good at, but mm-hmm. um. I guess depending on your partner's, um, I want to say like love language. I don't know what the right term for it is, but mm. um, try to like pay attention to like tiny things. Um, yeah, I don't want to say I'm like the best at it, but that's one thing that I've learned. <laughs> mm. I mean, no, but it's something that you're aware about, which is which right. is half the battle because I think a lot of the times we can be. Um, lost in our own world Mm -hmm. where we don't pay attention to the things that we might need to change so Mm -hmm. the fact that you're aware of that is good on you good on you (laughs) right yeah um but yeah it's just sort of interesting to sort of see how the world evolves and maybe this is my mind just drawing it back to like that culture and philosophy aspect of it but Mm -hmm. it's very interesting to see how the world changes, but there's some things that never change, right? Mm. Like be it in the context yeah. of relationships or be it in the context of life. Mm-hmm. We might have an iPhone 13 out in the world, mm-hmm. but the way you lead life, you still have to lead it the same way that somebody who just had an iPhone 5 mm-hmm. would lead their life, you know? Right. Yeah. That's true. So what is your sort of take on that? Like in terms of, the world changing, but not everything in terms of the principles of life changing. Um, yeah, definitely. Like what you say, even though like we have like a lot of like new advanced <laughs> technology, but the basic philosophy still exists. You know, we still have to be, <clears throat> we still have to make sure that we live in a way that's, um, you know, um, I guess morale in a way like we have Mm -hmm. to make sure that we're in check and not be the psycho in the community (laughs) right we have to there's always that um you know you need to be treat everyone nicely you know social interact uh human interaction goes on and i don't think technology or ai in the future is going to replace that everyone still needs that daily life um that we're having right now. 100%. 100%. I agree with you completely. And that's a beautiful way to sort of close this part of the podcast out. So thank you so much for sharing everything that you did, Cheng Hao. I really appreciate it. Like, Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah. <laughs> we went to many different places, COVID, relationships, mm-hmm. art, mm-hmm. philosophy, <laughs> whatever. But this is great. Like, This is why I sort of like having those tangential conversations because I think it takes us to places that you share you not to say that you don't think about what you're sharing but Mm. you do but you're more open to sort of navigating different things that are out there so right it helps you you like realize things that you never really thought of for sure for sure for sure for sure yeah so thank you share it thank you for sharing everything that you did um we're gonna transition into the word association game called bish bash bosh Mm -hmm. where basically i will give you five words one mm-hmm. at a time mm-hmm. and you have to respond to each word in mm-hmm. either three different three different words or different phrases so for example if i was to say culture mm-hmm. what are the three things that sort of come to your mind when i say the word culture that's mm-hmm. sort of the spin on this culture mm-hmm. is not the word but that's mm-hmm. just sort of an example okay um does that make sense yeah cool um and again for anybody who's new uh, to listening or watching this um, all the words on Bish Bash Posh are the same for every guest because, again, it helps add perspective to the way people see the same word differently. Mm. Um, so, yeah, speaking of which, the first word is differences. What are the things that are, call, sort of, excuse me, that are sort of calling out to you when I say the word differences? Uh, differences. I would say um, love <clears throat> and people. And also um, 
culture. Hmm. What are the three things that come to your mind when I say the word nuance? Uh, what's the definition of nuance? Uh, well, it's not a textbook definition, I guess. But mm-hmm. uh, how I like to look at it is that there is gray. It's not always black or white. There is mm-hmm. like an intersection of like if you were to look at a Venn diagram, mm-hmm. there is that middle intersection. I forget what that thing is called, but there mm-hmm. is that part mm-hmm. where there's a bit of both. It's not mm-hmm. just a my way or the highway kind of mm. thing because everybody has different exp- uh, different experiences of life mm-hmm. and that's how they sort of navigate their life let me let me just pull up this uh definition real quick and mm. let's read it out um okay uh, nuance is a subtle difference mm-hmm. in or shade of meaning expression mm-hmm. or sound um so yeah that's the um, generalistic meaning of it I guess from that definition, I'm not like fully aware of it, but to me, it sounds like balance, mm. um, compromise, and also, um, I guess, I don't really know the third one. Anything. Almost, what, is, what is something that's floating in your head right now? Um, humans. I would say mm. humans. I like the fact that you use the word humans there. You use the word, excuse me, humans there. Uh, the third word is learning. What are the three things sort of calling out to you when I say the word learning? Um, I would say um, knowledge, experience, and um, enjoy. Mm, beautiful. The fourth word is empathy. What are the three things that call out to you when I say that word? Um, sad and um, I guess oh, empathy. <laughs> As it, sorry, it's taking like me to a. Uh, it's taking me a bit long to like think of these words, but it's okay. It's okay. Take yeah. your time. Take your time, and don't feel the need to sort of think of the right word. Mm-hmm. Just think of the words and then, that are coming yeah. to you right now and just say it. Right. Yeah. Um, I would say sad and pity and um, negative, which is not good, but, you know. <laughs> mm. Gotcha. It's interesting that you use those words. I've never gotten sad before, but that's an mm. interesting sort of like empathy can seem sad mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, but it's definitely something that we could all use a little more of as a human society, if you will. Mm. Um, But yeah. Um, But no, that's, that's an interesting sort of choice of word there. Mm. Um, For the last word for this segment, it is similarities. Um, I would say teamwork, um, society, and also um, Again, a, a human. I think we all have like that similarity between us. Beautiful, beautiful. That's a great, great way to close the segment off. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for playing along on the segment of Bash Bash Bosh. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're just going to transition into two more questions. Well, the all last right. one's not really a question. But the first one is, um, how do you relate to people? Um, I would say try to like know what they enjoy um, mm. and just not be all about yourself. Mm. Gotcha. Beautiful. And for the last question, which is not really a question, Mm -hmm. uh, but more of a request, if you will, Mm. if you could share something positive, be Mm. it a quote or a lesson that you've learned in life or whatever it may be that you'd like to share with everybody else, feel free Mm. to share that um, with everybody who's watching and listening. Um, I guess just... um take whatever you're experiencing right now as a lesson even no matter if it's good or bad just enjoy the process of life beautiful beautiful well thank you so much for Cheng for joining me and sharing everything that you did um yeah this is great i'm i'm grateful yeah. that you were able to take the time to do this thanks for having um, me <laughs> yeah for sure for sure and for everybody who's watching and listening thank you so much uh we'll see you guys next time Thank you for watching. 
this episode of Perspective Platoon with Pratik featuring Cheng Hao. Make sure to mention in the comment section below some things that you found interesting, intriguing, or relatable about this conversation. Make sure to also check the description box below for other sources of information and content that we've talked about today. If you've made it this far, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell icon to never miss another episode. And thank you once again for joining in on this conversation and being a part of Perspective Platoon and Random Relatability as a whole. I'll be forever grateful for all of you who take the time to listen to this. So thank you so much. And until next time, stay safe, take care, and don't forget to keep your mind open to different perspectives. Because you never know, random relatability might just be around the corner. <laughs>